When you take delivery of your QT3 turbine sprayer, it will come in one outer box. Inside the box, you will find a separate box and the QT3 turbine unit. After unpacking the outer box, you'll find the following components. The QT3 turbine unit, the hose assembly, the spray gun box, and the instruction manual. Before operating the QT3 turbine sprayer, it is recommended that you thoroughly read through the instruction manual, taking time to carefully go through the general safety rules. Keep in mind that this is an electric power tool and should be operated with caution. Never point the spray gun at anyone or any part of the body. Always wear a spray mask respirator. Gloves and protective eyewear are also recommended while spraying. Make sure the spraying area has good ventilation and keep the turbine unit on the floor at all times. If spraying flammable media, the electrical unit must be at a safe distance from the spraying area. Please note that you should always read the paint manufacturer's data sheet supplied with the coating prior to it being sprayed. Before starting to set up, it's important to point out where some of the features and controls are on the QT3 turbine unit and spray gun. On top of the unit is the carry handle. On the front control panel, you have a fan speed adjustment knob to increase and decrease airflow, and the on-off switch. On the side of the unit is the air filter. The air is sucked in through this filter, so it must be kept clear at all times. It is important to note that the air adjustment knob should be at its maximum setting unless spraying thin viscosity coatings such as stains or wood preservatives where fogging or mist is occurring. To start setup, first start with assembling the spray gun. This is a relatively straightforward process, but some important points are needed to be followed to make sure the unit operates correctly. The components in the spray gun box are as follows. The vent tube assembly, the toolkit, the spray gun head, and the paint cup. First, fit your spray gun head to the paint cup as shown making sure you have the cup lever at the front of the gun cup. Then tighten it with the spanner provided in the toolkit. Next, fit the vent tube assembly. It is important to note that this must be fitted with the blue section of the one-way valve at the top and the black section at the bottom, as shown. Make sure the tube is pushed well onto the hose fitting on the spray gun head and the other end on the spray gun lid. The next step is to connect the hose on the QT3 turbine unit. This is a quick release fitting. The larger end of the hose connects to the QT3 turbine unit and the smaller end onto the spray gun. It's useful to use the well in the top of the unit to keep the gun in an upright position. Inside the spray gun cup and attached to the spray gun cup lid is the siphon rod. If the spray gun cup is fitted with the cup latch at the front of the cup, this rod is bent forwards. This allows the unit to be used close to the ground or spraying something lying flat, such as a windowsill, where the cup will have to be tipped forward slightly. Don't ever turn the spray gun upside down during operation or lie it on its side. This will cause damage to the one-way valve situated in the vent tube assembly. On the underside of the cup lid, you will find a plastic diaphragm with a hole in it. It is important that this hole is kept clear for the spray gun to spray correctly. It's also important to make sure the cup lid gasket is in good condition and the cup rim is not damaged or deformed. This would stop the cup from pressurizing and therefore prevent it from spraying correctly with thicker coatings. Pour the paint or other coating into the paint cup, taking care not to overfill. It is important to get the viscosity of the coating correct in order for the spray gun to operate effectively. 
It is reasonably easy to check the viscosity by stirring the product and lifting out the stirrer. If the coating runs back into the cup and forms a swirl pattern on the surface, or more commonly known as an ice cream effect, the coating is too thick. The paint shown here is still slightly too thick and will need a small amount of the correct thinner added. Use the thinner as recommended by the manufacturer of the coating. After adding the thinner, stir the coating thoroughly to ensure an even viscosity. At the front of the spray gun is the air cap. In the position shown, it is set to spray in a vertical direction. By turning the air cap, the spray gun can be set to spray in a horizontal direction. At the back of the spray gun are two adjustment knobs. The top knob is the pattern adjustment knob. When in vertical position, it will give a wide spray pattern of around 10 to 15 centimeters, or four to six inches. And when set in the horizontal position, it will give a narrow round spray pattern of around two centimeters, or one inch. The adjustment knob can also be set anywhere in between to give a perfect size spray pattern for the component being sprayed. Take care you don't overturn this knob as it can get damaged and may not operate correctly. The lower knob adjusts the flow of material being sprayed. Turning it anti-clockwise increases the flow and turning it clockwise decreases the flow. It is always recommended to start spraying with this knob fully closed in a clockwise direction. When the trigger is pulled in this position, only air will flow and no paint or material will be sprayed. Moving the spray gun in the direction you'll be spraying, you should now slowly open the flow adjustment knob, turning it anti-clockwise until a perfect spray pattern is achieved and at a speed you feel comfortable with. This method should also be adopted when changing from a wide spray pattern to a small spray pattern, otherwise too much coating will be applied and result in the coating running. With your spray gun and hose attached, the airflow adjustment knob on the QT3 turbine unit turned up to maximum, unless the coating is very thin, and your coating in the pot and mixed correctly, as detailed in the paint preparation section on this DVD, you're now ready to start spraying. For optimal spraying, hold the spray gun approximately 10 to 20 centimeters or four to eight inches from the surface and have the flow adjustment knob turned fully clockwise. Pull the trigger on the spray gun as well as moving the gun in the direction you'll be spraying in. Now at the same time and with the other hand, open the fluid control knob slowly until the required amount of coating is coming through the nozzle. Don't hold the spray gun in a still position with the trigger pulled as this will result in the coating running. The air cap should be rotated for either vertical or horizontal spraying and the spray gun should be at 90 degrees to the surface. Move the spray gun parallel to the surface and for best coverage, overlap each pass by about 50%. When in operation, it's recommended to support the cup for a more stable motion. Remember to always keep the pot upright and don't position the spray gun on its side or upside down. With such precise adjustments, spray patterns like this can be achieved, which are essential for spraying thinner areas such as spindles. The spray pattern achieved should be a fine, soft pattern and on a well-prepared surface will achieve a smooth, flawless finish with excellent coverage. The first step in the cleaning process is to slowly release the can lever on the cup lid and open. Empty the cup of any material not used. Rinse the cup out and clean off any residue of paint that remains in the cup. Now rinse the pipe off. Next, put the correct cleaning fluid for the coating as recommended by the coating manufacturer into the cup, reattach the head and rinse. Now you should fill the cup with the recommended cleaning fluid and spray until empty. Repeat this process with cleaning fluid until satisfied that there is no paint residue left in the spray gun. Lastly, Use the brush supplied in the kit to clean away any residue of paint left on the nozzle before putting the spray gun away.